given a little uh, uh, understanding of what it is. Oh, let's stop now. <laughs> okay, okay. I think in, uh, from the perspectives of many youths nowadays who perhaps were not that um, thoroughly exposed to Buddhism from a young age, um, some may view you know, the topics of, let's say, rebirth or karma as something which is very abstract to them, something in which some may even argue you know, has, is not scientifically proven. Mm. So how does one then cultivate faith in those concepts uh, so as to motivate them to act out of compassion and out of kindness? If you set faith in a blind sense, then you must accept karma, otherwise you will go to hell. In Buddhism, no. If you don't accept it, that's fine. As your wisdom grows, as your knowledge grows, but the more I study, the more it looks possible. Now, that is my faith. My confidence that everything else the Buddha taught seems to be true, let me stick with this. In the Kalama Sutra, the Buddha says, you must know yourself that this is true. That, that's the important word here. When we are talking about faith, and we are talking about devotion, it must be true to you, not because somebody said so. Okay? And that gives the Buddhist yeah, his, his pride in being a human being. I am a human being, I've got my own mind to think, to observe, to test, and I decide for myself. Nobody decides for me. So young people yeah, are quite right in wondering whether this is true or not. They did not feel guilty about it. They are not any less Buddhist. In fact, they are more Buddhist. Why? Because they are willing to question it, test it. When you have questioned it, tested and found out for yourself that this is true, ah, then it becomes the truth for you. All right, so Uncle Vijay, um, let's take the uh, basic act of bowing three times to the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha, yeah, right? Uh, yeah. Or before a Buddha statue or a monastic. Yes. So generally many devotees in the Buddhist community deem this as an act of devotion, as an act of respect. Yes. But not many people may understand, may fully understand what is the significance behind this uh, practice. And some may even view it as being ritualistic. Yes. So could you perhaps um, share with us, how does bowing three times, okay, um, or paying homage to the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha, promote mental purification? And it is not purely an act of idol worshipping as you know, many may uh, think it to be. Absolutely. Bowing three times. Let's just stick to that because a tie to that is offering water, flowers, all of this. Okay. Yes. Now, uh, but bowing three times. Um, there is no rule, no law in the universe that says it must be three times. If you want to do it four, go ahead. And ten times bowing is good for your health. <laughs> okay. So. Don't worry about the number of times you, you, you bow. But why do we bow three times? Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha. Okay, it, it, it makes sense. And why bow? Bow is not, not paying respect to that stone uh, image in front of you. You are you're not doing anything to that stone image in front of you. What is, uh, this is where understanding is so important in Buddhism. That you must know what you are doing. When I bow, I am destroying my ego. That there is a higher power than me. And the me is not important. When I understand there is nothing here, and I have destroyed that by doing this, so it has nothing to do with the Buddha image. It has to do with me coming to the right understanding of who I am. Okay? So, the Tied up with the bowing is the three joysticks. There are those who say you must burn three joysticks. No, no, no. Save energy. One joystick it does the same job. We must not tell young people that this is the only way to do it. What is the sensible way of doing it? You can't go to heaven by burning three joysticks, I tell you that. 
When we do that, what happens is there's a purification that goes on. Yeah? Where your body takes second place to your mind. When you do that. It's only the beginning. Ritual is only the beginning to the real thing. The ritual is not a bribe to the Buddha. Yeah? The ritual is preparing your body to calm down, to come into a state of uh, quietness, then the mind can operate. Then that is the important thing. You see, the Buddha image is there not because I can pray to it, but the Buddha image represents the Buddha, the Dhamma, the Sangha. I develop my virtue, my physical discipline. Then I develop my mental discipline. Sila Samadhi. When my physical and my mental are in consonance with each other, then my wisdom arises. And to, to sustain you through that, you can't have wisdom all the time. To sustain us, we need faith. Faith and devotion. These two go together to sustain us. A time comes, once we have crossed the river, we don't need all this. Buddhas don't need to pray. Arahans don't need to burn your sticks. It's a cheaper life being an Arahant. Okay. So we understand this statement. Um, worship the contents and not the container. So understanding is key to the practice of Buddhism. And otherwise, you know, it's just another practice of blind faith or, you know, it's not yeah. that different from joining a cult or worshipping yeah. the, you know, um, supreme leader. Yeah. So, Uncle Vijaya, what is your advice for um, maybe the audience out there on how to practice sadda, not blindly, but with wisdom and with understanding? Yeah, the wisdom of the past, over 26 centuries, yeah, our ancestors have come up with these beautiful, simple rituals. At the end of the day, they are very simple. You bow, you offer water, you offer lights, which are available everywhere. All right? These are very basic, very simple things to help you physically calm yourself. All right? But they are not ends in themselves. They are a means to an end. That young people must understand that if you just choose to simply sit like this and gaze at a, at a bodhi leaf, you are doing the same thing as bowing three times, whatever. Because what is happening is what the mind leads to. And then you said that beautiful uh, quotation, pray to the contents and, content not, to and con not to the container. That's why the Buddha said, yeah, don't pray to me. The, one of the disciples was just looking at him and he said, don't look at me. He who sees the Dhamma sees me. That means he who sees the content sees the container. So don't turn it the other way around. But the container is important because if there's no container, we can't focus. If we can't, it needs to be physicalized. So we pay a lot of respect to the Buddha image. So this faith is needed to hold all of this together. All right? Devotion is needed, but it is not the end product. Many times the Buddha has said, rites and rituals in themselves cannot save you. But like a good boat, they can take you across the river. Once you have crossed the river, don't carry the boat on your head. Throw away the container. Okay? Because you have become one with the content. He who sees the Dhamma, sees the Buddha. Thank you very much again, Uncle Vijaya. That was a very enlightening, very insightful message on Buddhist devotion, Buddhist faith, and how it differs from the conventional understanding of what faith actually is. So um, perhaps, Uncle Vijaya, you can just give us a quick summary on the topic of the day. Uh, basically, when once we understand the meaning of faith from a Buddhist standpoint, namely that it is a confidence, it is an intuition that this is the right path for me. Nothing more is required. You are not required to blindly follow everything that is told to you. 
All right? At the same time, it must not be a wholesale rejection of everything you don't understand. Yeah? Because the wisdom of the past, our ancestors over 26 centuries have sustained this. There has to be something in there. There is this mind that we need to develop. So that is tied up, faith is tied up with devotion. And devotion has to do with rituals. These rituals have been built up over centuries. And if we do it with understanding, the joystick in itself has no spiritual power. When I offer the joystick, I contemplate on the fragrance that it gives out. And I contemplate on the impermanence of my own life. So something very simple, and the same thing with flowers, the same thing with water, yeah? When I concentrate, and I know that behind this ritual is a very deep understanding of the Buddha's teaching. And it's simple, and everybody can follow it. Okay? And when all of it follow it, what happens is we recognize ourselves as Buddhists. Buddhists do the same things all over the world. And this gives us a sense of unity, a sense of, of oneness. If we do it with understanding, with wisdom, then our faith grows in a Buddhist sense. That's, that's the faith. And that faith is strengthened and sustained by rituals. But we don't stop there. Our end point is understanding, wisdom, nirvana. Through faith, we highlight the one thing that the Buddha taught. Do good, avoid evil, purify the mind. This is the teaching of all the Buddhas. Outside of this, there is no Dharma. Remember that. So, lights, candles, joysticks, flowers, float processions, all of these things are ritualistic, but they lead to spirituality. That is the one we have to grasp. But don't let go of all these rituals. For the next thousand years, they have to go on. Because that's what gives form, that's what gives the container to the content. Don't throw away the container. The container is very, very important. So thank you very much again, Uncle Vijaya, for that very insightful sharing. So to our audience out there who wish to learn more and deep dive into Buddhism, just remember this, Buddhism goes beyond just ritualistic practices. It is a way of life, a certain set of principles and beliefs that would bring happiness to your life. So if you would like to embark on this journey of um, spiritual cultivation, be sure that you are seeking content from the right sources. And there are many online resources that are available, teachers that have made their resources available to you for your own benefit and for the benefit of the community.